What exactly is PB's Wonderful World of Ministry? Well, it started from an idea of something that I didn't get to do as a child because my family, and thankfully they did, we had a tradition of going to church Sunday nights. And the Wonderful World of Disney here came on Sunday nights just in time for church. So I didn't ever get to see it. So I hope you're going to enjoy PB's Wonderful World of Ministry. Are you excited? I can't believe it's finally time to submit my flowers to the Miracle Fest! I can't wait to see these beautiful flowers. Where are they? But they're right in front of you, Susie. What do you think? Ha ha! Very funny, Mr. Curly. Now where are my real flowers? What do you mean? These are your marigold plants. But they're just stems! Where are the beautiful yellowy orange flowers? Well, they haven't bloomed yet. This is how the contest works, Susie. You submit seedlings to the committee. That's one of these green stems here. And then they watch it grow into a flower. The trick is picking the best seedling. I'm thinking our best bet is this one right here. The short one? Don't you think the tallest one is our best bet? Not this time. I feel confident the shortest seedling will be the most beautiful marigold. Well, they're my flowers, and I'm going to submit the taller one. Susie, I promise to do my best to help you win the marigold medal. I have a lot of experience with plants, and the short plant looks healthier to me. I need you to trust me. You're right, Mr. Curly. Everything you've done so far has been to help me, and for my good. It's kind of like what we've learned about God. Yes, Susie, you're getting it. We can trust God because He is faithful and does everything for His glory and our good. Just like He did for Abraham when He promised him to be a great nation. And just like He did when He asked Abraham to sacrifice Isaac and then found Isaac a wife, Rebecca. When God's promise to Abraham's family to come true, Abraham's family had to keep growing. Today we learned about Isaac and his kids. Those boys fought with each other even before they were born. And Jacob tricked Esau into giving up his birthright. Sometimes it shocks me to see how messed up people in the Bible can be. That's right. The Bible isn't a book about perfect people. It's about a perfect God who loves imperfect people and rescues us. He uses imperfect people for his glory and for our good. God chose Jacob to continue the promise to bless the whole world. In those days, wasn't it usually the older son who would get the blessing and the larger inheritance? That's what it meant to have a birthright, I think. You were right. In addition to a larger inheritance, the birthright in Isaac's family carried God's promise to Abraham as well. God's covenant with Abraham continued with Isaac's family and eventually to Jacob. Nothing could keep God from fulfilling his promises either. He is more powerful than anything or anyone. Now, let's get your seedling to the festival. How about before we go, let's pray and thank God for his promises and ask him to bless my plant. And no matter if I win or lose, I'll be grateful that God keeps his promises to me. And you kept yours too, Mr. Curly. Susie, I think you've learned the best lesson of all. This morning in the Gospel Project, our main story point was that God's covenant with Abraham continued with Isaac's family. Isaac had two sons, Jacob and Esau. Esau, being the older one, sold his birthright to his younger brother, Jacob. And this meant that Jacob would inherit all the wonderful blessings from his father, Abraham. Through Jacob's family, God would send the promised Savior, who would bring blessings and salvation to the entire earth. Your friend Duffy's got on his thinking hat. Hopefully you do too. Let's review some questions from this morning. What was especially interesting about the birth of Esau and Jacob?
Well, they were twins, and Jacob was born holding on to Esau's foot. Question number two. What did Jacob demand before giving Esau a bowl of stew? Yeah, can you believe it? Esau gave up his birthright for some stew. Question number three. What promise did God reaffirm to Isaac? Well, it's the same promise that he made to his father Abraham to bless the entire nation through their family. Question number four. Why do you think God chose Esau, the older brother, to serve Jacob, the younger brother? God is all-powerful and all-knowing. We may not always understand his plans, but also God is able to use anyone to accomplish his task. So when he does something that's out of the normal, ordinary, that shows his power. So how was Jesus's life, death, and resurrection different from what people expected? Well, Jesus was the king of kings, but he was born to just an ordinary, humble family with not a lot of fanfare. Jesus showed humility and loved sinners in a time when the religious leaders and thought they were better. Last question. Esau gave up his birthright. What is your birthright if you trust in Jesus? Well, those of us that trust in Jesus will inherit eternal life.
Join with me tonight and open your Bibles to Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, where we find about four great friends. When he entered Capernaum again after some days, it was reported that he was at home. Jesus did many, if not most, of his miracles here in Capernaum. So many people gathered together that there was no more room, not even in the doorway, and he was speaking to the word to them. If you look at the top of the Sea of Galilee, you see the pink arrow where I'm pointing to where Capernaum is. Then they came to bringing a paralytic, carried by four of them. Since they were not able to bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him, and after digging through it, they lowered the mat on which the paralytic was lying. Seeing their faith, Jesus told the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. But some of the scribes were sitting there, questioning in their hearts. Why does he speak like this? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Right away, Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were thinking like this within themselves and said to them, Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up, take your mat, and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he told the paralytic, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. Immediately he got up, he took his mat, and went out in front of everyone. And as a result, they were all astounded and gave glory to God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Now let's open our Bibles to Luke chapter 5, verses 17 through 25, where we see where Jesus heals and forgives a paralytic. On one of those days while he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea, and also from Jerusalem, and the Lord's power to heal was in him. Just then some men came carrying on a stretcher a man who was paralyzed. They tried to bring him in and set him down before them. Since they could not find any way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on the stretcher through the roof tiles into the middle of the crowd before Jesus. Seeing their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. Then the scribes and the Pharisees began to think to themselves, Who is this man who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But perceiving their thoughts, Jesus replied to them, Why are you thinking this in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he told the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up take your stretcher, and go home. Immediately got up before them, picked up what he had been lying on, and went home glorifying God. And everyone was astounded, and they were giving glory to God, and they were filled with awe and said, We have seen an incredible thing today. So here's my takeaway from this. Jesus not only healed the man physically, but he did something even greater. He healed the man of his sins. He forgave his sins. Being able to walk around while on this earth was a great thing for this man, but being saved from his sins and be able to live in heaven forever is even a greater blessing from God. So you may ask, why can only Jesus truthfully make this claim? That's what the scribes and the Pharisees were fussing about. Well, Jesus knew that he would take this man's sins upon his own shoulders and bear them on the cross at Calvary and pay for those sins with his very life. And we know that God was satisfied with that sacrifice as Jesus rose on the third day. It's important to have good friends. This man had four great friends that were willing to prove their faith by actually putting their feet to the action. They believed that Jesus could heal their friend that couldn't walk. Helping their friend wasn't an easy job. It was hard work. They had to carry him and tear up somebody's roof. But they were determined to help their friend and get them to Jesus. God calls on us to get our friends to Jesus too. Jesus has the power to heal our broken hearts and to save us from our sins. Are you willing to help someone in need? I hope so. Oh, wait, I've been having so much fun in frontier land. I don't want to leave. So, for your safety, remain seated with your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the train. And be sure to watch your kiddos. And if any of you folks are wearing hats or glasses, best remove them. Because this here's the wildest ride in the wilderness. All right, appreciate it. Mountain Railroad. 
This is one of the famous three mountains in the Magic Kingdom along with Splash and Space. We'll get to Space Mountain later. For now, let's ride what is a favorite of many first-timers and veterans alike. While it's not my favorite, I definitely enjoy it and try to ride it each time I visit. Thunder Mountain, as many call it, to make it a little easier, is an extremely fun and creative roller coaster type thrill ride. It is pretty fast moving, especially for those riding in the back. It opened in 1980 after the first after the first of its kind opened in Disneyland in 1979. One neat fact is that the sound of the ride was recorded and used in the second Indiana Jones movie, Indiana Jones and the Jumble of Doom, during that mine car chasing sequence. This actually took place over 10 years before Disney acquired the rights to the Indiana Jones franchise. It's also interesting that the same man who recorded the famous saying, hang on to your hats and glasses that you hear right before you take off, also recorded the voice of Benjamin Franklin at the American Adventure in Epcot. There have been a couple of notable and unfortunate incidents on this ride. In 1998, a five-year-old boy at Disneyland Verge was seriously injured and his foot became wedged right before the train pulled in to unload its passengers. He lost all three toes on his left foot to amputation at the hospital. In 2003, a 22-year-old man died and 10 others were injured when the locomotive in front of him became airborne after derailing and landed on the first passenger car. While I've never forgotten to do it, I hear it's also a lot of fun to ride this at night as the fireworks from the nighttime show are going off. In 2012, it had a lengthy rehab which included a new interactive queue line. It also included several famous hidden Mickeys and even a hidden Tinkerbell. The ride lasts about three minutes, which is pretty long for a roller coaster. The Walt Disney version is 25% larger in size to the Disneyland version. Since the ride is called Thunder Mountain, let's talk about Thunder for a minute. Can you think of a time when Thunder was in the Bible? Well, there are several. Thunder is mentioned in Exodus, in Revelation, in 1 Samuel, among others. You can make the case for thunder during some of the storms of the Bible, such as during Noah's Ark, Jesus walking on the water, or Jonah. However, I want to talk to you about another thunder story that's maybe not quite as familiar to you. In John chapter 12, verses 20 through 36, Jesus talks to God in heaven in front of the people. Jesus predicts his own death, admits he is troubled by it, and asks that God, God's name be glorified because of it. God then speaks from heaven and says, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The people hear the voice of God, but most think it was an angel speaking or just thunder. They think God's voice was simply a rumble of thunder. Jesus immediately tells them that God's voice was for his benefit and not theirs. I don't think the people there that day realized what they heard. They just thought it was thunder, a simple storm, a low rumble. You might hear if you saw some dark clouds on the horizon. But they got to hear the voice of God and it sounded like thunder to them. Have you ever heard the voice of God? Maybe when we hear thunder, that is God reminding us of his power. Maybe when we hear a bird chirping, that is God reminding us of his creation. Maybe the sound of the wind is God showing his presence all around us. In John 10, 27, Jesus says that his sheep know his voice. We are those sheep and should know when he speaks to us, whether it be through his word, through others, or even through a storm we hear in the distance. God speaks to all of us in one way or another. He tells us what we need to know to follow him and be with him one day. The next time you ride Thunder Mountain or even hear the sound of thunder in the distance, think about God and his voice. Even better, take some time to just go outside into God's creation, away from man-made sounds, and just listen. However God chooses to communicate with you, just listen to what he is saying to you. Listen to him and follow. So this morning we learned that Abraham lived to be 175 years old. That's getting up there. Well, what do you do with a cow that turns at least 100 years old? <laughs> you put him in the museum. <laughs> Join our watch party immediately following PB's world. Details are in the link below. For episode five, the conclusion of Sink or Swim, we'll start at the 12-12 minute. If you liked today's episode, we've got lots more on PB's wonderful world of ministry. Check out our channel. Uh, check out Scripture Shorts and Bedtime Blessings if you each night want to have a story read to you. And we meet during the week as well on Zoom. We'd love to have you come to RAs, GAs, or Kid Zone. And... Make sure you like, subscribe, save, and share. 
Have a wonderful night.